moves her to protect last year's revolution. CNN's Raza Seya is in Cairo and updates us on the latest development. No, they're not. A lot of outrage here in Cairo, although at 1 p.m. local time right now uh, in Cairo, things have calmed down considerably. There are still some demonstrators out in Tahrir Square, those who pitched tents overnight, but certainly not the numbers we saw uh, yesterday. This was one of the most intense and violent days of protest we've seen over the past couple of years. According to the health ministry, 140 people injured throughout Egypt, little under 40 people injured here in Cairo in demonstrations that look very much like the 2011 revolution. Outrage clashes and anguish in Tahrir. Thousands of angry Egyptians back in a public square that has become the Arab world's emblem for the democratic right to protest. This was where Egyptians demanded the ouster of former President Hosni Mubarak last year. This time the fury aimed at current president, Mohamed Morsi. We're here because we don't want Morsi to rule us anymore. It's a one-man show, he wants to do everything, and uh, this is not, not, nothing at all of what we want, you know? On Thursday, the new Islamist president made himself the most powerful man in Egypt by announcing sweeping decrees he says are designed to push forward the drafting of Egypt's new constitution and speed up the formation of a government that's still missing a parliament. What President Morsi's decree bans anyone from overturning any of his declarations as he took over office in June. That order is to stand in place up to the parliament this morning. So technically it means for now, he can do whatever he wants without any oversight. I just felt he was telling us, you guys don't exist. It's, it's just me and my people, and there's no place for anybody else in, in Egypt. We're not allowing for a dictatorship again. 30 years of dictatorship is enough. Egypt is not going into dictatorship once again. In a separate decree, Morsi banned the breakup of the Constitutional Assembly, the 100-member panel assigned to draft Egypt's new constitution. Protesters here say the panel favors Islamist factions and ignores demands by liberals, Christians, youth groups, and women's rights groups. Some have sued to dissolve the panel. Morsi's decree forbids that. As nightfall approached, anger turned to violence. In scenes similar to the Egyptian revolution, protesters clashed with police. We're right along one of the major arteries leading into Tahrir Square. <laughs> Clashes between, <laughs> between security forces and protesters, tear gas. And we're moving away. <laughs> As the protests intensified, Mr. Morsi appealed for calm. In a speech to hundreds of his supporters who gathered outside the presidential palace in Cairo, he defended his decrees and rejected accusations of a power grab. I didn't take a decision against anyone or pick a side against another. I have to put myself in a clear path, a path that achieves a clear goal. Several hours after Mr. Morsi's speech hits quitting, we're still out here in Tahrir Square, protesting throughout the night, setting the stage for what seems to be an intensifying face-off between the president and his opponent. And that face-off is taking shape as we speak. One of the presidential advisors has quit in protest, and the Judicial Club has called for a meeting today. This is an organization that represents the top judges in Egypt, including the Supreme Court judges. There are rumors of a possible strike by the judges, which could be incredibly disruptive uh, for this country. A lot of people anxious to see what the coming days bring, Natalie. In 1960s, he was an astronaut with a genie for a wife. In the 1980s, he was a ruthless oil tycoon. This was actor Larry Hackman. He was an icon of American television. He died Friday at the age of 81 from cancer. CNN's Colin McEdwards looked back at his career. He wore many hats in his career, but is best known for the Stetson that he wore on Dallas. Despite roles on film and on stage, Hagman will always be remembered as the villainous J.R. Ewing. And you drove Cliff to attempt suicide? 
How was I to know he was going to do a dumb thing like that? When J.R. was shot by an unknown assailant, it became one of the most famous cliffhangers in TV history, watched by 300 million people from all around the world. Hagman never expected the show to endure. Honey, I just started this show doing six shows. I never thought I'd do 300. In fact, the Dallas franchise was so successful, the series was recently reprised. The U.S. network TNT brought it back with a new generation of viewings, and Hagman came back too, returning as JR once again. Critics say he was the best thing about Dallas, but explaining the character's appeal, Hagman once said, the time is ripe for a real bad guy, and I'm it. Have a good day, Master. Oh, I'm going to have a wonderful day, Jeannie. It was a good guy who Larry Hagman blasted into people's living rooms, playing astronaut Tony Nelson on I Dream of Jeannie. The show was a hit in the 1960s and is still popular in syndication. Even as a kid, Hagman orbited in showbiz. As the son of Peter Pan star Mary Martin, his movie roles included Up the Cellar and Harry and Tonto. I don't need an office anymore, Pop. I'm living off the cream now. It was only after milking a huge contract from the producers of Dallas that Hagman became immensely wealthy. He had houses, he had cars, he had vices. Two of them included drinking and smoking. He smoked for 24 years, gave it up, and became an anti-smoking activist and spokesman for the American Cancer Society. And I've met at least 30 or 40 people that said they quit because of my personal involvement, which makes me feel really good. He stopped drinking in 1995 when he was diagnosed with liver cancer and underwent a life-saving transplant. If we'd won in Vietnam, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Nobody's thought, Jack. In recent years, Hagman appeared on the big screen in films like Nixon and Primary Colors. <laughs> But it is his role as the charming and conniving oil man that audiences will never forget. Colleen McEdwards, CNN, Atlanta. Time now to take our second break. We'll be right back. Over now to sports, dozens of players began the journey to claim the title of the best rod player in Banjul, many of them from the various booths that littered the streets of the greater Banjul area. But it was the genius of an emerging star in Abdul Sise that shined gloriously in the championship. Ababuka Sengo reports the star of Topsin Vu is a deserving champion of a very competitive championship. For Gambia's finest drought exponents, dominated by Banjul's best, with Dobson's King of the Treat crowned champions of the Modu Fall Memorial Championship. The All Girls School of St. Joseph Senior Secondary was the venue of this ground of the Gambia Drought Association Championship. It was a classic venue for the thrilling competition, a perfect tribute to a game which owes much of its success to a steady mind and faultless concentration. The Modufal Memorial brought together some of the top performers in Gambia Drought, and the cast was led by the unmistakable figure of Suleiman Norman, a true champion of the game. But on this day, he was led through by a supporting cast of some of the finest up-and-coming players in the game, ably represented by the likes of Abdul Sise and Pa Bojan, both from the Dobson Vu. Dobson Street Vu has become a hotbed for the production of top talent, and the members of the VU demonstrated their superiority once again, providing the majority of the players in the last four. The celebrated figure of Suleiman Norman entered the semifinals against one of the first faces of Gambian draft in what looks on paper as a foregone conclusion in favor of the veteran. The brutal truth is neither player gave in. In this mortal semifinal contest, the pendulum swung back and forth and in an amazing class of thought and ideas and style. What later transpired in the contest was an advert for the game in the Gambia. This was not written in the script, as the game was destined for a nail-biting stalemate. Umpire Sambanja intervened to flag Abdul Sise, winner on time. Unity Vu's flag bearer and one of the leading faces of Gambian draft, 
briefly and hotly contested the decision, but the reality is the moment has arrived when a new face and a younger poster image emerges to take this spot to a new exciting phase of